Hey, good day everybody and welcome back to the Air Warfare Group. This is Juice again and today's video is going to be a multi-purpose video. Uh, we're going to be doing a quick aerial tour of Jordan or at least the Jordan portion that's on the Syria map uh, and we're going to also uh, do a little tribute and little memory of uh, General Charles Yeager, Chuck Yeager. Uh, those of you may remember in 1947 he's famous for breaking the sound barrier um, <clears throat> he passed away on December 7th this year at the age of 94, 96, I believe. He was getting up there pretty age. I'll have to check on that. But if you uh, want to find out any information, just Google him. You'll find out uh, more information on him stuff. Um, General Yeager was uh, Brigadier General when he retired. Uh, stayed involved with the Air Force and other types of associations. Um, I actually got to meet him the day before my private pilot check ride in Marysville, California. He was standing there in the airport waiting to be picked up by Jerry West, uh, the basketball coach and player. Um, and they were going to head out in a Learjet and going to go fishing in Alaska. And this was back in 19, or in 2003, I should say. And I, I met him and I knew that he was kind of a little standoffish. Uh, he doesn't like the public coming up to him. And I realized that, and so <clears throat> I just casually said hello to him when I went by. Uh, he was there by himself at the ops desk at the FBO, and uh, just said hello to him. I, sa I, I said, good day, sir. And I walked away, and I went and took care of something. I came back, and I said, uh, General Yeager, uh, you don't know me, sir, but my name's Don Welch, and my uncle Gary Simonis used to work for you. He goes, yeah, I remember Gary. How's he doing? And we just caught up on that, you know, and stuff like that. And he asked me what I was doing out at Marysville, and I said, well, I'm actually play, taking my private pilot check ride tomorrow uh, up in Quincy, California. And he goes, oh, okay, yeah, well, and we just talked for about 15 minutes. It was a pleasant conversation. Um, I did see him quite a few times at air shows at Marysville when he would come in or, you know, the Mustangs were there. He'd come and stand in front of them, take pictures and everything every now and then. So, so this is a tribute to him because we are in the TF-51 Mustang. Uh, we're featuring that as the module right now, and we're on the Jordan side, down in the south on the Syria map, for DCS Syria map. And Jordan's not very big on it. I'm going to go to F-10 real quick. You can see what it looks like. We're down here at King Hussein International Air College. Uh, as a matter of fact, Amman, Jordan, the capital of Jordan, is south of us off the map and stuff. But we are just to, you know, we're quite a bit east of the West Bank, but we're just below the Syrian border, so so we're going to taxi down in Glamorous Glennis 3, which was, uh, Glennis was Chuck Yeager's first wife. Uh, she passed away in 1990. Uh, he survived her by 30 years, from 90 to 2020. And uh, his, if you've seen the movie The Right Stuff, you'll notice that the Bell X-1 that he broke the sound barrier in had glamorous Glennis on the side of that and uh, I remember seeing his pickup truck when he would he'd come down drive down from Grass Valley to uh, Marysville Airport to get picked up to go fly with somebody and we'd always t see know that he was out somewhere because we'd see his pickup truck and his pickup truck license plate said Bell X1 <laughs> it was uh, it was one of the older blue California plates too so he'd, he'd had that plate for quite a while and stuff but just a little uh, salute to General Yeager who lost his life uh, here recently due to due to old age. Nothing uh, nothing I've heard that's uh, related to COVID or anything else. Just uh, just got up there and uh, lived a full life, almost 100 years. So on the Syria map, you'll notice that uh, King Hussein is the only airfield right now in Jordan. And I'm hoping with the expansion that they're going to put Cyprus in, I'm hoping they also expand the map a little bit farther south and add uh, Amman. And so what we're going to do, though, is we're going to take off and we're going to fly up over the city of, I think it's called Urbid. It's I-R-B-I-D, Urbid. It might be Urbid. Uh, if somebody knows how to say that, if you can type it how it says phonetically, that would be great. And uh, we'll go to altitude, altitude view. You can see the city right there showing the thing. And let's go to satellite view. You can see the detail on the city. It's pretty dense. And it's, you know, it's set, set up like a wagon wheel. You can see it's got a center, and then it fans out into a fan in a circle and stuff. So, But we're going to check that out when we get airborne here. Let's go back to altitude. And we're almost to the end of the runway here.
All right, here we are and at the end of the runway. We've been cleared for takeoff already. This is a sunset flight. Let's see what time it is. It is 17.06 in the evening. It's a wintertime map. I think I set this to December weather. And do a little flight control sweep check there. Now the reason I say that the that the TF-51 Mustang is the best module in DCS is it is when you think about that one it's free it's a replica of the Mustang P-51D minus the weapon systems minus the extra fuel tanks but it is a free clickable cockpit wonderful to fly aircraft I think everybody should try it out if you, it, everybody owns it it's in DCS and as I've said in other videos my only regret is I didn't start flying this earlier. I should have started flying it earlier. Run it over towards the left end of the runway there. Let's get a little smooth up. And we're our airborne. And gear up. You got great visibility in the Mustang. For those of you that uh, fly the Mustang and you're using head tracking, face track no IR or uh, track IR or one of the other free head trackers out there, uh, check out my video on FOV. If you put in the YouTube search Air Warfare Group Field of View or FOV, you'll see that uh, I've customized my FOV. If you look outside, <coughs> you see how close the uh, pilot's head is to that canopy arch where the canopy closes there. I try to mimic that as realistically as I can in the cockpit. And it really makes the gauges really visible. And so uh, it's it's pretty, to me, it's pretty cool. It does reduce your field of view a little bit, but you just got to keep your head on a swivel, especially if you're a fighter pilot. You're going to, you're always going to be checking your three to nine line and checking your six. And there's Queen Kusain. We're off of that. Let's see where we're at on the map. So here we are. We just left King Hussein. We're going to fly out and we're going to circle around orbit and stuff and then we'll come back now this right here let's see which one is the which one of these is sea of Galilee? this is the sea of the galley sea of galilee right here i believe let's go to satellite <clears throat> yep there's sea of galilee which is right in the area where you've got israel you've got syria and you've got uh jordan all coming in together It's kind of cool. You look on the canopy there of this airplane, you can even see where it's got Captain Jaeger uh, written on the side of the canopy there for his name. And it looks like it's got uh, 1, 2, 3, 12, 12 German kills, 12 aircraft kills. So the differences between the P-51D and the TF-51 um, operationally is like I said the weapons uh, but you also cannot uh, on this aircraft you can't put any fuel storage in, on it and everything and if you look at the modeling on this you'll notice in the HUD or in the in the front of the panel on the windscreen there is no HUD there is no gun sight or you know gyroscopic gun sight and also if you look inside in the back you'll see a seat back there it'd be neat if this was also a two-place aircraft imagine if you because it's a free aircraft everybody owns it Imagine if you could take a buddy up and put him in the back of this and take him for a scenic flight and stuff. That would be pretty awesome. He wouldn't even have to buy it because he already owns it. All he's got to do is have DCS. So, but that's the difference in the modeling. Uh, otherwise, the scripts, the inputs, the skins, everything is just about the same. I think the pages on the manual for the TF-51 or the P-51, there's only two pages difference. That's how much difference there is in it. Hey, look over there at, uh, I think I see a VOR antenna right off the tip of the wing there and everything. Let me check on the map. Yeah, there's not a station on the map yet, but it's definitely, uh, definitely looks like one over there that we just flew by. I might be wrong. I'm seeing other stuff there. That's just some type of tower, but it's from back here, oh, I see multiple ones out there. They look like they're windmills or something like that but uh, we'll have to check those out on another one of the flights but if you can see it in the resolution we're at 1440p right now at 60 frames per second and let me know if you can see those towers out there 
uh, running on a line. You know what that might be? Those might be observation towers for the border. Let's see where we're at. Uh, we're not that close to the... Oh, yeah, they could be. They could be a uh, little bit of defense zone down there and everything. Yep, that totally could be that based on the, the scale of everything. So here we are. We're coming up. Beautiful sunset today. You can see the Sea of Galilee out there uh, just right of the windscreen nose right next to the uh, support arch. You can see the Sea of Galilee and you can see the city coming up above us. Lots of farmland in this area. Uh, I think it's a beautiful map. It, I flew over some of the ruins uh, the other day in Syria. Uh, it's pretty amazing some of the stuff they have. Look at these canyons they have up here. Um, and, and if it's anything like Nevada map was uh, when it first came out and then developed in the Normandy map it's just going to get better and better with each washing. A lot, of the, a lot of times they'll complete these maps, but they still refine them through computer processes, I believe. Uh, there's got to be some reason why every time you get on Nevada, I know it's not my graphics card update that uh, is making it look so pretty. Maybe it's because I don't fly it you know, for a week, and then I go back to it and I go, oh, I remember why I love this map. So, And this has become one of my favorite maps, too. The frame rates are pretty optimized. Let me, I'm going to bring up my frames see if I can do it. Uh-oh. Yeah, there it goes. I'm getting 70 frames right now at this altitude looking out. And we'll close that out. So I got 70 frames right there, which is unheard of on a brand new map that hasn't been optimized yet. So uh, Yurgra Media has done a great job. Um, they've really spruced up their work. And I can't, you know, can't say thanks to them enough. Thanks to ED for hiring them for this and stuff. So here we are. Again, we're trying to stay within the, the boundaries of Jordan on this flight. So we're going to do a circle around the city, a couple low passes, and then we'll head back to King Hussein. I apologize if this video seems kind of long for a, uh, for a review of Jordan and everything, but I wanted to make sure you guys had a chance to uh, see the everything from the startup to the takeoff to the city tour and then the RTV back to uh, King Hussein. A lot of people are probably waiting for my series to start on pilotage and dead reckoning. Um, and I may, I may supplement that training with some of the other stuff that I've been able to find online. Just link some videos in my community tab. Um, but basically, there's already a lot of quality stuff out there that will tell you about you know, how pilots, in, in especially in the old days before GPS navigation or TACAN or uh, inertial navigation systems, this was the way you flew. You, you got out a map, you put a line across to where you wanted to go, and you, you know, if you wanted to go from point to point, uh, let's say you're going to go from Chicago to, uh, Chicago to St. Louis, St. Louis to Dallas, Dallas to San Antonio, and San Antonio to Houston. You know, that would, you would basically draw lines on a chart, and then you would take and look for references and landmarks in between those. And that's kind of what we do in DCS when we're flying the pistons is, we say, okay, well, you know, we take off, and it looks like we're going to go magnetic here any of this. And if you know what the forecast winds are, you can calculate your wind correction angles. Uh, and don't get me started. I, I, I probably would fail miserably at trying to use an E6B uh, for crosswinds and wind components and stuff like that for navigation. I would I would pick it up pretty quick, but I would fail the first time, I'm sure. Um, every time I had to do a flight review and I had to do any of that, I always was slow to pick it back up, but it came back naturally. But it's been eight years since I flew real airplanes, so I need to fix that someday. But look at the city. It's, you know, not a lot of repetition. You do see a lot of similar looking buildings down there, but it's, it doesn't look like, you can't see any repetitive patterns to me uh, and stuff. Quite a bit of mosques down on this map. I don't know if it's a scenery thing or if there's actually that many mosques out there in Jordan. I do know that it's a predominantly, uh, I believe it's a predominantly Islam country, Islamic country. I do remember King Hussein, uh, I believe he was married to an American. And uh, he was one of the more moderate leaders in the Middle East. I know that he was easy to work with with the U.S. government and uh, Middle East peace talks and stuff and everything. But, um, you know, I'm not sure how the current situation is. If you look at the news, it seems like Syria is the big bully on the block.
So we've been flying for about 20 minutes now and the sun is getting closer and closer to the horizon. So this has been a beautiful flight. Let's do some flybys. All right, so we've just rolled around. Starting back to the airport. I think I'm getting concerned that it's going to be dark soon. Don't want to land in the dark. You need to do some night flights. That's the bad thing about filming on night flights is you guys don't get to see anything. So, so we just circled around the city of Orbid, Orbid, and we're heading back to King Hussein. And one of the let me give you a demonstration on the map. So if you bring up the map and you go to the go to the DCS map. Let's see here. Let's get this set up right there. You go up here to altitude. And then what you would do is you go up here and click on go up here and click on the measuring tool. It's up in the top left. And then you come down if if you're let's say we're going from King Hussein to Orbit and back. What we do is we'd right click on King Hussein and we'd we'd right click and hold and take our line all the way to the city center and what that would do is that would give us our 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 heading or bearing compass bearing of 301 degrees 23.93 nautical miles then we would calculate what our speed cruise speed's going to be in the Mustang which is I'm cruising at about 250 miles per hour uh, you do, you know, you do some simple math, and you find out that that's like a 12-minute flight, maybe a 13-minute flight. And uh, and if you don't have any winds on the map, then you can do your, you don't have to do a wind correction angle. But if you've got winds coming from a certain angle, then you've got to realize that you're going to have a little bit of a, a speed difference across the ground, and you're going to have a, a wind correction angle too. Your airplane's not going to be flying straight at the target. You're going to be flying with a little bit of a yaw, uh, and that's kind of neat to see. So if you guys are looking for anything on pilotage or dead reckoning, uh, Embry-Riddle, the school that I went to and graduated from back in 2003, has some good videos on their E. It's called ERAU. I'll put a link in the description. ERAU Special VFR, and it has really good pilot training videos by some of their instructors. But realistically, YouTube is your friend. Google is your friend. You can find all kinds of information how to do that. If you guys put comments on any specific questions that I can help answer or some of my pilot buddies can help answer, feel free feel free to throw those in there. You're always welcome to stop by Tactical DCS and see us in the Discord there. Uh, we hang out there quite a bit. You can also message us through there and find our Discord information on Tactical DCS. That link is also in the description uh, uh, down below. All right, so here we are flying along. Hope the last sound wasn't too loud there for you guys. I tell you, the Syria map is one of the first maps where the haze and the sunsets look realistic right off the bat. You know, the first day it was out. Look at those hills. There's little gentle rolling hills down there. It's pretty amazing. You got to consider when, <clears throat> when this company put out the Normandy map. Normandy was like one big flat map with just a bunch of farmland and a few buildings and stuff. It was not optimized at all. It was pretty laggy too from what I remember. You got some flooded fields over there. Probably rice maybe. I imagine there's a lot of uh, figs and dates down here. A lot of Mediterranean style fruits, tomatoes, apples. I think the apple originated in, in this region. Uh, the apple might have come from Iraq or uh, Afghanistan, maybe farther, further to the east. I was watching. Uh, I was watching the history guy on the origin of the apple, and I guess it's uh, actually it's from Kazakhstan, uh, pretty much far east, you know, over towards halfway between here and Russia. 
you know, and if you if you you believe what you see in America television, you think that the apple was invented in our country. All right, there's King Hussein off our nose just to the left below the cowling there. Get a little better view there. I'm going to go to King Hussein's camera. We're going to land on the same runway that we came in on. So let's go. Let's go to F10. And we'll click on King Hussein Airport, and then once that's highlighted, you'll see the information over there. Let's go ahead and turn off our measuring tool. We're on King Hussein now. Hit F11, and it'll take you right to King Hussein. And then we're up in the sky somewhere over that way. Oh, I can see us right there, right in the middle of the screen. We're just a little speck coming. But let's go ahead and watch this landing. We'll get this set up and everything. The Mustang is pretty fun and easy to fly because you actually get three axes, axes of uh, trim. You get elevator trim for your pitch, you get rudder trim that you can program, and you get aileron trim. And I tell people when you're flying a piston airplane, especially a tailwheel airplane, first thing you'll want to do is trim the rudder first before you trim the aileron because if you trim the aileron to control a roller or anything, you can pretty much get it to react, but you'll notice that your your ball is not centered in your uh, turn slip indicator, in your turn coordinator. And so what you'll want to do is you'll want to trim your rudder first and then trim your aileron uh, after that. And then, of course, pitch trim is pretty much self-explanatory. Be advised, if you do pitch the nose high to climb and you want to level off, if you are setting a certain cruise speed and you trim to level off to level flight and your vertical speed indicator is not going uh, up or down you're going to have to make sure that you come back on the power or you'll you'll just continue to accelerate until you reach to the, your maximum at that level so and you, you, it's pretty complex but I think uh, I think this makes you a better pilot flying a piston airplane in DCS you get to learn how to manage systems a little bit better you're not just pushing buttons and and relying on computers and stuff Okay, we're circling over the airfield now. It's one of the track files that didn't get corrupt. I was able to do the whole flight without having the airplane just crash into the ground. And at least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Even King Hussein Airport, even the uh, airfield down here has some uh, military value to it. It's got some hardened bunkers down there you can put fighter jets in. Okay, there's the prop back. I just pushed the, si the silence horn. I have that set to one of my HOTAS buttons on the Warthog. I have it on my fuel fullest tank. Now, that's another thing you learn how to manage in the Mustang, is you learn how to manage your fuel tanks. Uh, when you're flying along, you can get a fuel imbalance, get a little roll to one side. What I typically do is I'll fly, uh, I'll fly 15 minutes, or I'll fly 30 minutes on one tank, usually the left tank, and after 30 minutes, I'll switch to the right tank, and then I'll fly it for 45 minutes on the right tank, and then I'll fly 30 minutes on, uh, after that. I'll switch back to the left, fly 15 minutes, switch to the right, fly 15 minutes, and so on to keep them balanced. All right, we're setting up. Let's see where we're setting our our flaps are down to 40. We're well within. Another neat thing is learning to fly the TF-51. You look on the panel there. Your checklist is there. Your landing gear no lower, no higher than 170. Flaps no higher than 165. And the, it, this is in miles per hour, not nautical miles per hour, not kilometers. It's miles per hour. You know, look over here, we've got our manifold pressure gauge, got our RPMs in hundreds. And to keep that airplane uh, flying, you want to keep those in the green arc when you're cruising or climbing. Just like in real airplanes, I found when your temperatures get a little high in the P-51 or the TF-51, just lower the nose, back off on the throttle a little bit, you'll see it go down a little bit. King Hussein traffic, Mustang 231, short final. Looks like we're coming in on runway 32. King Hussein traffic. Let's see how we do on the float.
I think I recorded this track file maybe maybe a week and a half ago. Been doing a lot of videos with Tyro lately. Uh, we've been doing some BFM stuff, but we've also uh, fell in love with the uh, Huey again. So we're just coming in, stabilized approach, aiming for the aim point. I've got our lights on, looks beautiful. There we go, a little drop in there and touchdown. That was a three pointer. Nice, one of my best. And look, I'm on center line. I can't believe it. That is not me. Um, you would almost think that the AI took over, but no, I did fly this airplane today. I'll count this one. It was a good one. And then as soon as I'm stable and slowing down enough, I bring the flaps up. And I don't know if I opened up the canopy on this, but you can. Once you're slow enough, and you can use your hand or use the... Uh, the right con left control left shift C to open the canopy. The Mustang is also one of those aircraft like uh, many of the German aircraft where you can lock the tailwheel when you're flying uh, so it makes it a lot easier to take off you just hold back on the stick and it keeps the tailwheel lined and locked. Um, you still have to use a little rudder because as you start to slip down the runway uh, air pressure causes the friction on the tail wheel to be less, so you'll we'll have to use a little right rudder until you get airborne, and you'll have to counteract with left rudder as soon as you get uh, as soon as you get level in the air. Well, that's pretty much the flight, guys. It's a little dark out here. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, look at those colors, those oranges and the the purples and stuff look really nice. We'll come in like this. Well, again, uh, rest in peace, General Jaeger. Uh, You've been one of the heroes in my book since I was a kid. Uh, one of the magical aerospace legends that I got to meet and shake hands with and have a conversation with in my life. And, you know, I'll remember that day. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've got it in my logbook because I was at Marysville Airport practicing for my check ride for the next day. So I have the, I have the uh, entry in there about my landings, takeoffs, what I did for practice for the for the private pilot check ride, and I even put in there met General Chuck Yeager. It was pretty amazing. That's it for the video. Let me know if you like it, and we'll see if we can come up with some more stuff on the Syria map. If you guys got, if you guys have any questions about stuff on Syria map that you want to see more of, let us know. Uh, this map is still in development; it's not a finished product, and I can't wait till they add Cyprus. Uh, Cyprus is going to be a, a neat little thing because then we can do cross countries out to the uh, out to the uh, island. I'm going to be setting up the carrier on this map soon, uh, super carrier. Uh, and I'll put in the LHA and so we can do Harriers and stuff like that. But I think it has a lot of potential. This map is really awesome. I can't wait to it. You guys stay safe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Everybody have a great day. Cheers.